hitting it hard with Pusha T. Yeah. And Queen. Kinda. My favorite thing about Queen is that Queen is played throughout every sporting event. Yeah. We will rock you with the most macho guys of all time. Yeah. <laughs> he and, was gay? And no one thinks about like that dude. Love Goblin Dick. I loved it. Like loved it. You can tell just by I mean you know, that mustache. You can see that mustache stash. from a mile away. From Go, the moon. That mustache has rested on a lot of dick. Yeah. <laughs> but my favorite. A lot thing, of great songs. I love Queen. Think how many Queen songs there are that are just you know they are. We will rock you. Um, uh, we Bohemian are champions. Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody got in the mix. I want to say that was a Wayne's World influence. Right, but it was still like a jam out, like get amped kind of But that's, song. Y- you know how crazy that is? Like, like how many Queen songs there are, A, that are awesome, and then B, like just you look around at like a, <laughs> a football game and it's the guy who hates his gay son is <laughs> singing to Queen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy that you look at, he's got no sideburns. <laughs> like the white walls flat, yeah, all the way at the flat top. And you're like, that guy definitely... The, is not cool with the LBGTQ <laughs> plus yeah. community, mm-hmm. whatever it is now. Um, uh, there was a lot of denial back in the day where it was just like, oh, no, there's no way that guy. Well, yeah. Like, it was a horrible thing. If you suppressed it, days. if you repressed and suppressed enough, yeah. maybe it won't be gay. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it'll just stop. Or, or, or just like any market economics, there will be a black market. And uh, you suppress someone's gayness. Brown market. Or a brown market. uh, Keeping it classy (laughs) on this sweat equity podcast. We're going to talk about uh, Eric's new news that he's been holding off on. Big news. Talk about. Finally talk Um, about it. We're going to give an anti shout out to Gimlet and Squarespace. Yeah, go fuck yourselves. How about that? Yeah. Mm. Um, You know. There was a contest where Gimlet and Squarespace were trying to find the next podcast. We submitted to it. We even showed some love. We sent. We even made a Facebook ad cut out. I hit all the employees at Gimlet and Squarespace. How did I do it? Super creeper mode. I'm very good at what I do. I was able to geotag the area and kind of go, this is, uh, this is what's, uh, where the offices are. Squarespace has a big one in Dublin. And then both of them, Gimlet and Squarespace respective have uh they've got respectively have their own office in, in Brooklyn and so I try to look up where that neighborhood was uh targeted by Facebook advertising targeted people who like both of those things cuz if you're in that area and you like those businesses you you're likely to work there cuz you can't go by job title anymore yeah good job it didn't work <laughs> no it we it hit them but it didn't work overall <laughs> Yeah, it took us about two seconds to realize that maybe we aren't the best fit for Gimlet. Well, we... With all the dick jokes and whatnot. It's kind of something that you deal with. I've probably dealt with a little bit throughout my whole professional career and professional, like, comedy career is that I'll probably, you know, I will give up uh, moving forward in order to say whatever I want. Exactly. Exactly kind of thing we're not gonna bow down to the man we couldn't just do that that riff about queen and uh and rock songs at sporting events yeah and gay da- dads with gay kids yeah. hating gobbling it, so. dicks right we couldn't do that riff if we were you know gimlet uh seems like a very npr yeah. like lateral move almost right we're not that we're not and we're, uh, part of the podcast that i like is that it's not polished now we can go the other, we can go way too far the other way, and <laughs> yeah. then the show becomes kind of garbage. But um, I think we're not that. If you look at how the branding from Gimlet and Squarespace, we're not that uh, mm. hipster clean look. No, you know, just look how we're dressed. <laughs> I'm wearing my super bo- dad mode. My bo- well, no one knows from the bottom downs. I go ESPN well, yeah, Sports Center went before it turned into the Today Show. We're doing the opposite. We have tuxedo pants on. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I just trust us. <laughs> uh, my monocle fell on the ground, <laughs> so I'm rocking my Bose nose shirt. So anybody that played Tecmo Bowl, 
uh, knows about Tecmo Bo. Might as well be Tecmo Bo. Yeah, and uh, should be a lot. I of get a lot of him. dads that like because it's uh, it wasn't fair. It was too good. Yeah, so play your life like Tecmo Bo. You zig and you zag. No one t- can tackle you. Oh, I was gonna say you use cheat codes. There's no cheat code. He's just amazing. That he was basically a, a living cheat code in that game. No codes were entered. I it's know. Not, it's not you contra. know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not the contra. You were that guy. <laughs> up were you down, the guy up who down, plays left, the, right, left, right, B, B A select start? Yeah, that's for two players. But Is yeah, it? were you the guy who always played as Michael Vick and ran around and and you know fourth and twenty six you get a first down? We uh, the Madden ninety nine, I believe. Uh, we had to make a rule that if you had Vick, you got to add like two guys on your team. What? What do you mean? Like, to we play, would do like, like thirteen mini- on eleven. No, no, no. Like, you can add any other players that weren't on the Falcons. Um, you could add them to the team you picked. So you could go. All right, you're you're picking Vic. You're picking oh. the Falcons. <laughs> I'm gonna add like Julius Peppers, and I'm gonna add oh, okay uh, Brian Urlacher, whoever was badass in yeah. nine, and I get them on my defense. Okay, I like that. Oh, we wasted a fuck. I got, when I think about how much time I wasted playing video games, <laughs> coming what? up with these rules. Oh, dude, just playing football games. It's it's great, but like at the same time, like I way too hard in the paint that way too. Yeah, it makes you hate your friends a little bit too much. Well, we would sit around all day. Like uh, my buddy Kyle would get a lot of surgeries because he's a big big fella, and uh, he played offensive line and stuff in college and all that. He was one of the better guards in the in the state of Florida, but like his knees were all fucked up, so he get all these surgeries, and then he'd have nothing to do. So I would just go, and I was fully bodied, fully able. Like, <laughs> I I could have done a lot of stuff, but I went. <laughs> I chose a good friend. I well, selfishly, I just wanted to play someone in Madden yeah. all day That's fine. and not have to do anything out yeah. in the hot sun. Yeah. So, I I there's value in video games. You learn strategy. Yeah. There's a good documentary on uh, Netflix about about them building video games, <clears throat> these programmers, and uh, it made me appreciate it a little bit more. I think you, I think it's a big time suck that I don't like, but um, I do think there's value in playing if you can. I can't cut it off. Yeah, like I if mean, I'm into it, I'm into it. There's man. no doubt the hand-eye coordination factor is a thing. Like you know. In the, violence in video games that's been proven it doesn't lead to anything i mean it, it's almost like an outlet i think i don't think it's good to see to do that over and over and over and over and not talk to anybody really and when you talk to people you're just i mean talk about like the un pc culture have you ever listened to someone playing a video game no there's like 11 year olds on there dropping in bombs and you're like yeah what? well that's a problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's uh, different <clears throat> that's what all twitch tv is basically yeah <sighs> but my thing is like uh that that documentary showed like how they i thought it was a good a good metaphor for either parenting or working with clients in this digital landscape is like when you play a video game the you have to have a character that kind of learn something along the way mm-hmm. almost so like well if it's a, a story type game so yeah the, uh, like procedural. <clears throat> the game was like a 2d computer game i guess <clears throat> one of those things that we never knew was big you know with gamers we don't know the gaming community really mm, but like really they show like uh these popular programmers they make this game and it it goes okay there's 40 levels but each the first 10 levels you have to f- we're, we're going to try to teach you how to know what you your capabilities are uh-huh yeah which is interesting right yeah yeah no no that's it's perfect it's a metaphor for life not <coughs> just parenting and all that stuff it's i mean a, it's use a, it for yourself but it's a weird guidance i never really thought about that is inherent in a lot of video games yeah i mean some of them do the uh forced tutorials where you're just like skip it i'm just gonna do it myself right and i can see the the, and what the appeal where there? It's, yeah it takes you a get, lot longer yeah you get destroyed but if, if you just sat there and followed the thing you you unless it's so intuitive then you can just like mario you can just go ahead and go but yeah but I mean that idea where it's like you start out at an easy level and it's kind of its own tutorial. By That's the way, cool. fuck Zelda, the first Zelda on Nintendo, because you can't beat the game unless you get the the magazine, like the accompanying, uh, like guide. Why? Really? What? You don't remember that? No, I thought I beat Zelda. 
I'm, I'm S uh, Super Nintendo Zelda, great. One of my favorites. Yes. If not m- beat that. My favorite game. Um I spent hours. It's that, that or NHL 93 uh, on Sega. Mm, yeah, I didn't have a Sega. I didn't either. Oh. I just went over to my friend's Tommy's house all the time and we'd just play Sega. Yeah. I, I guess I was kind of a, a, a video game mooch. <laughs> 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 I would just go over to my friend's house God and make them, Segas. make them stay inside all day. Uh, but b- before I was a huge Lightning fan, I don't even think Lightning were on the game, Tampa Bay Lightning. 93 is like... They Might had, have been their inaugural they had, year. They had like Poopa, and they had like a horrible team. Uh, and so I, I glommed on to the Blackhawks with Jeremy Roenick, uh, Steve Lamar, Mark Goulier, Ooh. yeah, Chris Chelios, Steve. Uh, there's another Steve Smith. Uh, he was a goon, probably. and then Ed Belfour. Oh yeah, the goalie. God, I could, I just rattle off. That's You're not impressed. Good. That's pretty good. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Which one do you want to know? We uh we didn't get the official uh, hotty toddy going, so we're gonna give a little hotty toddy. That's how you gotta bring it in. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh no, I didn't know. It's we were the equivalent. Are we a um, are we a morning show on it's the radio? We're in the morning right now. It's a zoo crew today, baby. Yeah, we need some cowbells and shit and uh-huh. fake laugh. We need like one Latin guy that fake laughs the whole time. Yeah. Like a husky Latin guy. Like, <laughs> oh, you crazy. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? Yeah. We, yeah. So, uh, do a little sponsor stuff. How you feeling? Who's our sponsor today? Well, it'll, it, it'll be nice. It, it is for the titular part of this show. Going over your news. Where am I? I Got to find it. Go grasshopper dot com forward slash sweat. Get that hook up. Holler if you hear me. Mm-hmm. Get a phone line um, for your business. Don't be a jabroni. I can't get over how much that makes me mad. And now that I've been talking about it on the podcast a lot, <laughs> mm-hmm. every time I hear like Google Voice, it, it now just drives me nuts because there's so many options out there. But you don't get the hookup. It's try, excuse me, trygrasshopper.com yep. slash sweat. I uh, think we'll be using that probably. And then, go- and then for your, you know, we were talking off air about your CPA, walking you through some stuff. Gofreshbooks.com slash sweat. I think your CPA can link in and view what's going on mm-hmm. from afar. Yep. I don't yep. think a lot of people know that. Right. I, I take a lot of the features and stuff of these products for granted because I just go, oh, okay, moving on. And I forget to go, oh, do you guys know mo- most people don't give a shit and look at what's in their apps? So Yeah, I, well, we were meeting with our CPA yesterday, and it was basically, um, yeah, if you do it this way, you don't really have to do much of anything. They can look in there and do every, I mean, besides making deposits and things, you know, they can take and, care of it all. And he's a friend of yours, but let's say you get in a fight, you get in a spat over uh, uh, is Queen acceptable to play at church? <laughs> <laughs> it's church music? Yeah. And you say, you know, you, you love Freddie Mercury, you'd go gay for him if he was still around. Probably. I'm excited for the biopic. And your CPA is real conservative. And he's like, hey, man, I didn't like how you said that. He He's coming on the show. Right? Yes. So yes. He's fine. Hopefully, he's, hopefully he's he likes this scenario <laughs> if he listens to the show. But, you know, you get, you guys get in a spat. Hey, man, don't talk about my cues. Like one of those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then you can take his access out of, uh, out of Fresh Books. Yep. So yeah, that's great. It's it's good to have that fluidity, I would say, uh-huh. where you know, where you'd have to like you used to have to like print everything out and then show up with all your receipts and like remember yeah when we weren't as good internet wise and you do like Quicken <laughs> <laughs> yeah I never did Quicken but it, it's same shit. yeah it's all the same spreadsheet I used shit. to go to fucking um what what H and R Block. <laughs> In Santa Monica, the Santa Monica Mall, there was like a dead Sears department store at the bottom floor. Oh, those are the saddest places. So sad. Like the carpet's like fu- it fucked up. It looks like a post-apocalyptic like setting almost. <laughs> yeah. And then there's like a... This a, is how we do Texas now. A broom closet that had a guy from H&R Block, I guess, rented out. Kind of like Better Call Saul. Right, yeah. Where he's like, I'll Behind take the it. nail salon. <laughs> And then once I, the, I think the second year around when I figured out he just typed in everything into their program, which right. is essentially FreshBooks, 
I was like, oh, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> why why do I come to this crusty place? Yeah, taxes are I mean, the the programs out there, they can walk you right through it as long as you're not doing anything crazy. Really, the only people who need the CPAs are the super rich. Even no, me. I, I mean, no, no, no. I, I fully for your personal. No, I no okay. the go, no. Look, the government makes it difficult. Why? Why do we? Why do we have all these layers of rules? The thing should be a fucking sheet, and it should be a flat percentage. The thing, well, we shouldn't be paying it at the end of the year at all. We should be paying it when we buy stuff and making it just proportionate to what we buy is what it should be. If, I, if I'm, I'm good for a flat. Just yeah, make it flat. Fifteen percent on math. everything. But you and know, boom. You know if, why it doesn't happen? It's because if you it's go not buy a interest. boat, right? If you go buy a four hundred million dollar boat, you don't want to pay fifteen percent taxes on that. Or you, you can die, turn and you have to give part of your estate away. Yeah. If you're loaded. Yes, I know. It's, it's ridiculous. So, but you know who makes the rules are the people that aren't interested in that. Yeah, I know. It's a cottage. It's like a cottage industry. It's. It's insane. But uh, why do we have all these layers? Uh, like, I, I looked at a W-9 the other day, and I was like, what the fuck? They try to m- fucking get a designer, get a goddamn app designer <laughs> and design this thing better because it's like, it's old school, right? Yeah. And just reading the font, that six-point font, <laughs> j- I like it, it, it. it's hard to read, and you're like, I get, you're trying to... You're trying to hit every legal mark. You can't just say, like, you should do this, this, and this. Right. And then equal all these numbers up of dependents and whatever. They could definitely work on their wording, absolutely, though. But it's like, Jesus Christ. Like, I this thing was badass in 1945, but, like... F- it comes across like they did it so that you do have to f- hire somebody. Like, the bunch of CPAs got together. Like, maybe you should change it to this, and then they call us so yeah, that they why, can't read it. Why can't we just make, like, a simple form... Yeah. And you waive some of those things that are written in there legally. It's meaning like, hey, I'm cool with going for shorthand and having this card talk to me like a human, this page. Right. <laughs> anyway. Solve that problem. Sometimes you need glasses to read stuff like that. That's why you got to get Warby Parker. WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. These are our uh, three sponsors, but Warby Parker... I've been around with well before uh, they were a sponsor of this podcast. And, uh, man, talk about, like, uh, talk about a disruptor business that I, I just kind of like to watch as a consumer. I think that's part of the branding stories now is, like, you know, people are showing behind the scenes how t- more transparency, how the sausage is made. Uh, I think Warby Parker is a good example. If, you're, if you have a startup idea – where you think you've got like some kind of golden nugget where you're like, this is the idea. This is going to shake up this industry, right. whatever it is. You're, nice. I mean, like, uh, what, what, uh, not fresh, but, uh, what's the tax one? Um, Oh, turbo tax. Turbo tax to me is that kind of like whoever designed that. I know it's from Intuit, so it's, you know, a huge fucking company, but, but whoever, that's basically the that, same thing the CPAs are using where they're just like oh, type yeah. it in here. I mean, whoever whoever like managed that project to get that thing going, that guy needs a high five or a gal, or maybe a nice or big fat check. I pro- probably trade not. That. But t- I always I always admire people that can take something that's so messy and unorganized and complicated, complex, convoluted, and they can just fucking bottleneck it down to like here, here, and here. Uh-huh. This is easy to use. Can't, you can even do your taxes drunk on TurboTax. Yes. Not a sponsor. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. Same with like uh, LegalZoom. For yeah. I mean, it's... More or less. Yeah, you can use that for a lot. A big, a big part of those things is like the, the the liability of it. If you go through these things, they they act as a buffer, mm. kind of as an I, excuse sort of thing. Let's ask, let's ask your CPA when he comes on yeah. about that, because I heard um, they're not as good as you think. Okay. Because we're not. I don't know. Because the whole reason we're there, we're not going to look into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so when it's like you're going to get government protection for your taxes, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to hook you up, yep. and you're like, "Thanks, Turbo Tax, you're my best friend." And then it's like, "Oh, I didn't read any of that print either." Yeah. Because that's why I'm there. Well, I guess, so my CPA has been doing it for a thousand years, and Damn. his thing is like Methuselah. Yeah, he's done uh, thousands of tax returns, and you know, he's like, "I've only been audited. I've only had one audit by." you know, whatever in 27 years. So like his thing is like when you see, 
when the IRS sees something come from him, it's kind of streamlined in his opinion. I don't know. It might just be good luck, but mm. you know, it's like there's this uh, trust, I guess, that he claims there is. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure of that. You know, I go to my pharmacist every month to get my thing. Uh-huh. Um, and they penis they, pills. Viagra. Can Four Hymns be a sponsor? <laughs> what is that? You don't know about Four Hymns? I am sure it's a dick pill. So I use them as a scenario of good branding. How to? Um, so Four Hymns I heard about on podcasts. It's F O R H I M S. Not a sponsor of our podcast yet, but they do sponsor a lot of podcasts. So maybe we'll try to reach out. Um, they basically look at what medications become generic. So like the patent runs out on it. Uh huh. So thus they can make generics on their own. I think that's how it works. Like 15 years, you you can, like Cialis, I think, became that. Uh-huh. Um, Rogaine. So, cause shop hair, shop sex. Those are my choices. So if you look at their site, they did a really good job of doing that, what, what we talked about at the top of the show, the Gimlet, Squarespace kind of like, were a hipster look. The models they pick for dudes are like, you know, they're in, they're off center, I'd say. Kind of thing, kinda. And so, I heard they did a they did a good job. I'm I'm currently in the middle of learning programmatic advertising, and what that is is basically like treating ad space like the uh, like it's a stock. So those impressions, those ads you see on the right hand side, you're reading a newspaper in your local area, and they have ads everywhere. That space, that ad space, is commoditized essentially is a, th- a unit, right? And that that's like a stock on the stock market, and there's we're, I'm gonna I'm working on content to explain this better, but I'm gonna explain it like uh, it's the wire I think, because you have ad you have ad demand and you have ad supply, and mm-hmm. I'm like I gotta figure out a better way instead of doing this kind of diarrhea right now. Yes. To explain it like it's we're selling drugs, right? Drugs are ad space basically. Okay. Um, and there's pushers like push a T uh-huh. there's guys pushing the product. Those are the, uh, those are the Sales publishers. Team. Um, and then the advertisers, the demand side, like you and I are usually on the demand side cause we're, we're trying to help a client get placed. Right. And we're going through a big, uh, drug den and ad supply network like Google uh-huh. or Facebook. Okay. Yeah. And then we're finding out about the people who want crack rock. On the streets, we're finding that out. That's a data management <laughs> platform. I'll figure this out. Yeah, this one. This one, we're gonna have to actually write need out some refining. Well, I'm gonna need. Uh, I'm gonna need your help shooting something for this. I think. I get to be Omar. That's all I care about. <laughs> I, I was just gonna do a whiteboard session. But, oh, okay. Um, but I'm, I'll need your help writing it out. I was gonna do the wire, and then I'm like, that might be too specific. But <clears throat> program. I find out this programmatic universe. Just think of it like this. The advertisers, the things you hear about Google AdWords, Facebook ads, we talk about a lot on here because we're kind of all up in it. Uh, this is like another level of that. So it's like it's like uh, you're at home and you're doing some of those E-Trades. You're doing maybe you're doing Acorns. You're doing some of those like small micro investing things. Uh-huh. Um, and then compare that to like the stock exchange. That's kind of the big difference. Like okay. this is like another level yeah, and, um, I've been swimming in it. Okay. So anyway, I use four hymns. <laughs> four hymns is they're they're. I, I have a problem with these models. <laughs> right. These guys don't need any of this shit. Yeah, I know. Great hair. They're the after. They're the like twenty two years old. They don't need the dick pills. Right. Well, they're that has been creeping younger. So I'll I'll tell you that. Um, but four yeah, h- but not those guys. They look virile. So four hymns doesn't have really anything proprietary. I don't think. They I just they branded a lot better and they did a good job getting the first mover market because podcast advertising. If you look at any of our sponsors, you're considered a first mover. Congrats, listener, viewer, and uh, I hear about products and stuff before that comes out in a in a wide spectrum because of the awareness at the top of that beer bong funnel, right? Uh-huh. The we call it the beer bong funnel for uh, marketing funnel, marketing and sales funnel. Every business has one. Uh-huh. Awareness is where all that that frothy Keystone Lights at the top. Yep. Um, and the awareness campaign was 
let's hit podcasts that have this certain kind of male demographic and then programmatically made sure that whatever I'm interested in, I've saw ads everywhere I go. Yeah. I mean, they like, nailed the demographic part of it, the podcast. I mean, that's, the, I did say that the dick and hair pills is, <laughs> that's a good p- place to start. But they, they went hard podcast. I, I, cause I have a pretty good, um, like intuition on like, uh, um, behavioral trends and like uh frequency of stuff right yeah and i'm especially sensitive to it now because we're we're in this world but like three weeks ago they spent a lot of money in the bigger podcast that uh, i listened to Uh rogan corolla uh, wtf those kind of things and then they go we're only going to do it for three weeks or a month and then they went they shifted to the next the next rung the big gulp down the uh beer bong funnel huh interesting into uh consideration what do you mean where it goes awareness is at the top of the beer bong funnel yeah consideration where you're like huh maybe i should check that out then they keep retargeting the shit out of you to oh okay. to the site i see and then you convert i thought you were saying they were going to smaller podcasts oh they may have but um like they need to come to ours but it, that would make sense because they probably would keep refining with the data they have. Right. Yeah, that's true. And they can further target. So it, at any rate, for hims is a good example of, hey, we, we have a product that's not a differentiator. It's not totally unique. Um, and we're new. So what, how are we going to get the word out? And how are, the branding visual for me, I thought they at first I didn't really like it. And then it, and then it kind of caught on. Yeah. No, it's good. I like it. It's, but it's that hipster kind of like it's hipster, but you know it's clean, it's uh, straightforward. Using a lot of cream and colors and like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like guys you'd see probably in uh, Calvin Park Klein Slope or something. Models, I don't know. Yeah, guys who aren't really guys, kind of models. I mean, yeah, no, I like those real guys turned don't off exist. by the <laughs> models. Like, like, I wouldn't be friends with that dude. Like they don't exist in real life. These guys ain't doing any bench pressing, that's for sure. Bird chest. They do a lot of prancer size. Yeah. So let's uh we'll let's talk shift about over. the new venture. Yeah. So finally so we can talk about my wife, Dr. Nicole Morganti, is buying her own dental practice. It's called Forest Hills Dental in Tampa. You know, that's uh it's very exciting, but it's very stressful. So I told Law we should kind of run through the marketing strategy that I'll be attempting um, on the podcast and might help some people out. So, yeah, we'll try to extrapolate this out for the listener, too. So you're doing your own service business. This could help, <clears throat> hopefully. And then uh, don't you feel like you're a gay kid in high school and now you're, you are you can start talking about how you're gay? I know. <laughs> Finally get out of the closet. <laughs> Finally just start wearing them hot pants. Because before the show, we're like, you can't tell, let's not bring this up. Yeah. Let's not bring up this fight I have with my wife that I told you about. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we have a, a big list of uh, no nos. Uh, ninety nine percent were transparent, but there's some stuff where you're like, you know, I'll bring this up in six months when the dust settles. Right. Uh, but right now, if they were to he- the person were to hear that, they would only take that as an insult. Yeah. But, so you know, we're good now. I think everybody knows who needs to know, and and you didn't want to jinx it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're good. Should be good. So dentists are weird. We didn't yes. know. I didn't know that about the industry. Oh yeah, it's it's a weird. I I think your wife's weird in a good way. Yeah, I, love her. I knew her before I knew you. I think uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Since I've been fourteen, I think I've known <laughs> her. Um, so weird. Yeah, and uh, always loved her, and she is definitely an anomaly as the personality type. Yeah, <laughs> of a yeah. dentist. Right, and in a good way though, and that's part of what we're going to be focusing on. You know, is the the laid back family community feel that she brings to the table um the practice we're buying has been around for like 40 years yeah it was a it's a guy who's retiring who worked with his dad who was there for 20 years and then now they're selling it to us so it's um community oriented and it's it's it should be good so so we're we're talking hyper localized Uh uh-huh we're talking uh, the community it, it's in is probably median income, I don't know, 100, 125. 
I can look it up. Uh, no. In in the location, no. Oh, I, I wouldn't I, say it's that high. Oh no. No, but that's that can be a good thing. Um, oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, dental maybe. practices, um, they most all say that they take insurance, um, but some of them are what they call fee for service. Um, that's what this is, and that's basically where the practice is a intermediary between the insurance company and they help you file it, and um, you know they're they're basically getting paid all everything, but the insurance company is still paying the patient back. If that makes sense. Uh, whereas uh, an so insurance walk through a scenario like I, I'm gonna my teeth are fucked up because I haven't gone to your wife's. Uh, are they? Pract- I, I think I had when I went too hard on the um, Dunkin' Donuts Girl Scout cookie. Uh huh. You think one thing did it? Every day for a while. Did you, were you not brushing your teeth? No, I was. But like, if you brush your teeth in the morning and then get the coffee like 45 minutes after the morning, you know, leaving the house. Then you basically just have sugar kind of corroded on you. Well, yeah, that'll like do it. Barnacle all day, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I think I have a cavity, but I don't want to tell your wife. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna find out. No, and Unless she's you gonna never g- go to another dentist. Well, she used to work at this. I tried to write a bit about it. She used to work. At, she she topped around a bunch to try to find her own thing, which is a whole other journey, a whole other story. Maybe she'll come on and talk about it. But uh, we plan on it. We're gonna have but, her. But on. like, um, she she worked at this one place that was in. Uh, in the uh, very Hispanic part of, of, of Tampa called West Tampa. And I got a, I got a tongue lashing. That's not a service. I got a, I got roasted by her dental hygienist that was like from the hood. <laughs> and she was like, they do this kind of sending thing where they're like, look at this picture. Look at this poster about <laughs> brushing your teeth. If you don't do that, your gums are going to be fucked <laughs> up. And I was like, she tried to give me like the Al Pacino any given Sunday speech. Yeah, they I've heard them overheard them be like, "Do you know how to brush your teeth?" Like, oh yeah, that question. And they say it like really in a way that they're they mean like, "Do you know how to properly brush your teeth?" So they're weird because they don't they don't know how they sound. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's like yeah, I know how to brush my teeth, I'm not an idiot. But it's like okay, well there is you know a little bit of strategy to it. You know, hit all the spots, whatever. But yeah, they don't. Uh, they don't exactly have the uh, bedside manner all the time. So the Forest Hills, I'm looking up. At least I got Zillow's like average median house price, which is like 186. Uh-huh. Uh, and then it's got a huge golf course that eats up a lot of that. So uh, that stat's probably a little juke. But I don't know. What do you What do you focus on? About five miles out, seven miles out yeah. radius. Yeah, I'd say. I mean, it, it, that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah, I mean, we'll figure that out. I'd say start at five. Just because there's so many dentists out there, you know, going super wide might not help. No, no. I think, yeah, I think super localized is good. I think you have to have strategies for each layer. Think of think of it like a ripple, if you can imagine it. Mm-hmm. And you have three tiers to that ripple. It, we've talked about this. It's the uh, real estate sphere of influence kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So you have in the middle, and it and, and then take a, from the bullseye, take like, uh, a line and draw the arrow going out. Um, and it basically is like real estate agents are told like use your, so- it's called social capital, mm-hmm. which is basically friends and family is that inner circle. The next tier, uh, friends of friends. Mm-hmm. And then the next tier is acquaintances, you know, friends of friends, friends right? kind of thing. So you work inside out. Yeah. You're going to focus the majority of your time on that first circle in the beginning for sure. Uh-huh. Because just meeting someone new in general. I ain't got time for that. Well, yeah, it's tough to New bu- business owner here. It's a trust factor, right? That's a lot of. I'm thinking that's a lot of sales uh, when it comes down to like person to person kind of thing. Oh, big time. Well, you know, like it's not an oil change, right? right? It's also not getting your hair done. Because no, that's a that is like maybe the strongest relationship. Yeah, for a lady at least. It's like it's one of the only common scheduled medical procedures that you'll go like you're getting kind of operated on if you're getting anything other than a cleaning. Even a cleaning, it could be bloody. Right. You know, if you're not taking care of it, but it's it's weird. It's like this trust that you have to have with your dentist is is beyond anything I can think of. Right. I mean, it needs, and you want to create a, a CX, a, a customer experience that 
makes it not as terrible. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that we got to figure that out. That's going to be tougher, but it's doable. Nitrous oxide, baby. Yeah. Pump it through the fucking vents. No, like we the <laughs> casino. Just everybody's on Just it. Just pure oxygen. Yeah. No, no windows. Yeah. <laughs> Fire hazard waiting to happen. Oh, did we mention this dental practice is in a rape van? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's down by the river. It says free candy on the side. Yep. That's how they get you. Yes. Because you get your candy and then you get cavities. Uh-huh. Bam, right back. So the deal with uh, this, let's let's go backwards a little bit. So I always go, you know, it, when you're taking over something, let's not let's see what we can pick off the buffalo. Uh huh. Um, and part of that purchase, you get y'all got the commercial part of it. The commercial real estate part of it. Right. Well, there's, yeah, not yet, but I mean, we'll, we're eventually going to buy the building. It's part of the process. It's part of the process. Just, uh, assuming y'all get that, I'm just going to throw that as a layup. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have the practice side, so you have to kind of treat them. They're th- two different entities. But I mean, we have two different companies. From the other, right. But we'll have two different companies. Yeah, but you'll, you'll on your tax stuff, it'll say like the practice rents from our other entity, which right. is the LLC you'll have right. for the, the uh, property. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, what in the succession handoff, the baton handoff? It's a four by one hundred, um, and you're handing the baton. What are the things that y'all can scrape off? Um, f- like client list is obviously number one. Uh-huh. So, what's the retention plan? Mm-hmm. I don't. Do y'all have one, or uh, you want to spitball it out? No, spitball me, baby. I so. Mean, I think I think a, a big thing is trying to, you know, win them over. The client the client list I think for a dental practice kind of like a law law firm, uh, or general practitioner or whatever. If they're handing it off, you got to have something that kind of lets them know. Right. So that is part of it. Um, the uh, the former owner um, is sending out a letter. Um, Ooh, I've got a good idea. Like a transition letter uh, explaining what's going on. Um, So that'll be very helpful for the current patients. And then also something that um, a lot of dentists try to do is have the the former owner stay on for a transition period, show their face around, hopefully work too, but um, it doesn't always work that way. But that's pretty big for the patients that are currently there. To see the transition, see them working together, that he approves of the new dentist sort of thing. Right. Um, You're going to have to spend money, marketing dollars that you probably don't want to, but it goes, retention's your number one thing. You already have this pool, think of it like an advertisement stuff, like you already have this retargeting group essentially. Right. <laughs> yeah. you, you already, that that is your number one priority in the marketing department is uh-huh. to figure out how to retain everybody as you can. Mm-hmm. Attrition rate's probably going to be, I think when you move around, you lose, I don't know, what, 30% or something like that, depending on how far. Yep. So, it could be. Well, I mean. She doesn't have her own. She's not going to have a, a huge uh, patient base that's going to follow her. So let's focus on the, the current doctor's one. So you have, let's call it 100 patients. Sure. Um, you're going to lose 10 just straight up right. just because people don't like change. Uh-huh. You know, like, that's, I don't know. It just happens. Yep. Um. So you're probably working at your best game is 90% mm-hmm. of all the clientele. Yeah. Uh, how how would you want, if you're an older gent, older lady, now we got to get in the mind of, of this person, mm-hmm. how would you want to be informed that what would make you want to go, oh, okay, they really care? Yeah. That's what we're trying to figure out, so, I guess, beyond the letter um so when you're trying to figure transition out transition period. Hmm. So for those listening, when, when you're when you're trying to figure out marketing, uh, and you don't have the market research dollars, you don't have, you're just a you're doing your own thing. You're a small business owner. The best thing you can do is try to go for that empathy and go. All right, if my dentist, uh, if I was on the other side of this and I got a transition, what would I want? And you know what what I how would I want to know about it? what would that look like to make me comfortable? Mm-hmm. Um, so what I would say is there's a site called bond.co. I've been wanting to use this place for a while. Mm-hmm. It'll, it'll get your handwriting down from a robot. What? It'll handwrite letters for you. Well, that's creepy. 
So it's cool. They don't want my handwriting. No, so we get we get uh, we get Nikki's handwriting. Can you see that? Uh huh. The looping video on the website is uh, it'll show you kind of what's going on. So it calibrates your handwriting, and then it oh, and then whoa, and then it copies. It has a robot hand. We're looking like at Buster a... Bluth, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. going through there. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of creepy. And how, it's, it's not that expensive. I was just gonna say, how's that gonna be cheap? Um, because they do. I mean, they're they're pretty big in a way. Like they do a lot of volume. So if you're a huge, medium sized business and you're listening to this, and you're, or you're the office manager, something like that, CMO, uh, or marketing director or whatever, come holiday time, this thing's awesome. Yeah. And I might, I might go out of my way because then I'll go. I'll just handwrite everything. Is it is it take is it using a pen on yeah. the paper? Yeah. Oh, that's so weird. Because I mean, they got that thing where uh, you sent. They have all those form email or form mails that you get that like look like they're handwritten, but it's like a printed out no, yeah, handwriting. That, that handwriting. That people can feel that. Yeah. Pay for the pay for the more expensive thir- uh, girthier paper, right? Right. Um, we do that with our business cards and our thank you cards. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you do that for this? This may be the most important snail mail you all are going to send. Right. Because you're not, you don't really have to do this all the time. No, it's a ever, one-time ever shot. Again. So you have like a one-time shot, and you probably have five interactions really to kind of like get them to make sure they come back. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, so that Bond dot co, uh, not a sponsor. Uh, it'll help you send a free note if you want to test it out. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's I've been awesome. I've been sitting on that for probably a year and a half, and I just I keep forgetting about it, and I never have this instance like right now. Where that would be huge. Well, you know, it's it's not for everybody. How often do you need to mass send out handwritten things, you know? I mean... Oh, I'm behind... We have a hopper of thank you letters I need to send, because that used to be part of our process. Well, for people who don't let it sit like you. So that's another thing. Once they come back, then a thank you letter after that. Yeah. So part of that that's cl- good. client experience, right? Look, a handwritten letter, this sounds corny, and if you're listening, you're like... That's not going to do shit. Uh, how about this? Everything you get in the mail is terrible, right? Yes. What if you got something that was a little nice? Yeah. And it's not Amazon excluded. I'm talking like mail mail. I'm talking like mailman, letters, envelopes, those kind of things. Everything sucks. I go right to the garbage. So if you got if you get something nice, like a wedding invite is always like nice, and then it becomes a hassle. <laughs> like Then you got to do something. Like, what do I got to do with this? This is nothing. This is just a thank you. And if you if she handwrites it every time, you know, it's that that's part of the process, maybe the end of the day uh-huh. or the beginning of the following day, you write out the five you need to write out. Mm-hmm. It'll suck for the beginning part, but it'll you know, you only do it once and you don't do it again. Yeah, no, I like that. Um I I talked to her a long time ago about little things like, you know, when people are in the seat, this whole client experience stuff, people are in the seat, stuff on the ceiling that isn't corny. Yeah. Uh, maybe something branded, maybe something like a alternate logo or secondary logo or mm-hmm. something, something that or fun facts about the area. Yeah. I always like that. So Tampa's never uh, hit a hundred degrees. Yeah, do you know that? that? I did know that. That's a fun yeah. fact. I told a kid at Chick Fil A, taking my order about that. <laughs> like it's fun Thanks, now. Dad. Cool fact. I was like, hey, I just read a fun fact on mental floss. I, I say that too. <laughs> I tell you, that's people like, shut up. Of course, no, he, he, no. Was, he was very appreciative because he was super fucking bored and hot outside. <laughs> uh, when it gets too full, he's going down the line like uh, like In N Out Burger where they, they just get in line and start taking the orders. Um, so that's like a really small thing that goes a long way, especially with an older crowd. Yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, we're gonna do that. That's good. And somehow getting her f- photo m- in the mix to I don't know how, but putting a f- really having a visual of who she is, uh, maybe a maybe a card like we have a thank you card. Well, uh, we're thinking uh, a picture of the two of them together, <laughs> arms around <laughs> each other. Hey, yeah. thumbs up. You well, know, just we something to show that you know we didn't you know come down from New York and buy this guy out for a million dollars or something you know so like that's he approves part of the branding we talked about too was like staying that hyper localized like have smaller wink nod stuff to the area yeah babes of harris one of the best athletes uh female athletes to ever live yeah there's a golf course named after her right there um i would i'm playing john taffer because this is kind of how he would do it on bar rescue okay he kind of look at the neighborhood and go what is this place about 
right? Yeah. That's going to, because that can fill up the branding because uh, Nikki's not the type of person that's really like about her, like as a brand. Right. And so. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the thing that I'm having to like push on her. <laughs> I'm said, like, as a we brand. need to get your picture out there, okay? She's like, woo, woo. I'm like, it'll be valuable, trust me. So I'll, I'll say it to her if you want to send this part to her. I'd say you're a commodity now. You're not, you, you, you are, you're, you're package thing like yeah you're still a human yeah. you're still a person uh but and you're hot it helps it helps <laughs> be hot yeah all that and uh dad dad points, points. <laughs> dad credit score if you, if you ever listen to the podcast. um i'll just i'll take i'll i'll take the video snip it out and send it to her <laughs> cool <laughs> but uh but you know you ha- she has to treat herself as as something uh, existential almost. Right. We're bad at it here. Right. We, and we're trying to get better. Treat ourselves as a client. It's hard. For yeah. us. We do marketing though. So. Yeah. I mean, it's it's creepy to feel that way. It's it's a weird feeling to put yourself out. So it's the great way. that you, you're able to do it though. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's not like my wife's awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you're a cuck or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean it. No, no. Yeah, I know. Like, no, I know you mean it. I'm saying yeah. like. You're not the uh, leech husband that is like, uh, it's not, y'all have a good relationship. It's not like a totally, you're submissive, like doing all this marketing, like a fanboy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all part of the process. Yeah. But people need to get to know you, get to know her. Mm-hmm. So having these little, like, she has great reviews I saw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're going to play that up. Yeah. That's going to sure. be huge. So like whatever 5.5 out of 5 at, on health grades I want that on everything of your marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, any of those kind of review sites, any kind of accreditation badges, those things like um, dentist, top hundred dentists uh, under a hundred years old, <laughs> whatever it is. Every every fucking county has one. Every yeah. city has one. Yeah, yeah. Those badges mean something, right? I don't no. get it, but they do. I've accumulated a bunch of them, and it helps that she's an awesome dentist too. Legit. Right. So we're and we're gonna parse out some testimonials. What are some that you know? What, she's so personable as a dentist. That's her big differentiator as a brand, right? So yeah. we want to we want to go like, um, hey, here's the only dentist that's probably not a serial killer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like yeah. half of them are fucking creepy. There's something weird about you know dealing with blood all day and drilling into a human, and like you can't. That's not everybody's not like that. I like, think it's the thing it's, of like. Uh, like sur- a lot of surgeons have that thing where they they don't get personal with anybody, right? You know, so that that's why they're considered the jocks because they're just getting in there. There's no emotional level. Yeah, they're body mechanics, right? They're I think, and they're changing out parts. I think, um, you know, other than Nikki talking to me, trying to have a conversation while I'm under and have <laughs> shit in my mouth. I other know. than that, she's very personal. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I can't tell you the story back. I tried to get on my phone and have it said out loud from my phone. Um, I, I had an idea for uh, little signs mm-hmm. that you can hold up for the dentist while they're working on it. Yes or no. Ooh, like pain. Uh, f- Fogo de Chao with uh, the, the, yeah. the the card? Yes. The Brazilian steakhouse More card? More Novocaine, please, sort of thing. Or uh, just like paddle paddle signs. I like that. You could Just as a gimmick. Uh, do it like the golf course ones. Yeah, yeah. Like Something quiet, like that. please. You right. know how they have that? Yeah, get, exactly. Get the same exact one style. <laughs> that says quiet, please on it. Or, or, or that. For Nikki. <laughs> yeah. Quiet, or that. please, yeah. bitch. So, I'm talking. I can't talk. So some, like, we're, we'll, we'll get into this branding area like this. Uh, so CX, customer experience. It's big. And people don't think about it. And you have to think about it all the time. Like, I would put it in your calendar, hey, once a month. Even it's just like a self reflection almost. Take a walk mm-hmm. for forty five minutes, and think about how can we how can we make this experience better. Right. Um, we talked about she doesn't do it. Does she do any hardcore service like we're? You, but you might be in pain for a while. Um. I mean, not you know she she does a little bit of everything, sort of thing. Um, but she's really like good at not making it hurt. So that's like her number one thing. Well, what I was going to say is I had an idea of plastic surgeons. There should be a thank you bag or thank you something, uh, a, a swag bag. Swag. Like uh, food you can eat 
after surgery kind of thing. Ah. Like Netflix card, Smoothie King coupon, something like that. Right. So you can't chew or something. Or U- Uber Eats coupon that you can get a Smoothie King. I like that with a the lot. thank you note. So anything that she's doing that is intense like that, look, you, you figure out how to get this to like twenty five bucks. But it's part of the whole process, right? She yeah. writes a thank you card before the surgery or whatever. Mm-hmm. Somehow you get it over there uh, to their place, you know. Uh, well, we have a bunch of them sat out, yeah, sitting in a closet. Or yeah, I mean, as if much it's just as, be prepped coupons. as prepped as you can. I, you know, you got to There's little things where you can just get a basket that's like an old milk crate, hipster style. Go hipster uh-huh. style, old wood milk crate that uh, you can kind of like. Those can be used to like be like a uh, display. Yeah. Get your Etsy on. That's all I'm saying. Uh-huh. And then put like you know a couple things in there that they can read, eat, whatever. Just uh, put some thought into it. The fact that you do it mm-hmm. and go, we are high in client customer service, client service, whatever you want to call it, patient service. That goes a long way. Yeah. It's oh, just yeah. effort, right? Right. Other thing, uh, punctuality. This is going to be a hard one, right? How do you keep everything on time? Uh huh. That, it, that's probably going to be more. People don't think ops re- is relation re- has a relationship to marketing. I think it's a yin and yang, and so. Especially for something like that, the, I mean. The worst thing is like I was thinking about this too. Hours. Are you doing the ten to? Are you doing the eight to five? We're going to maintain the hours that the the former owner which maintained, which is uh, it's. Like two half days and then eight to five or six the other three days, so eight to noon on t- Tuesday and Friday I think it is. Well, I was thinking about this: the people in the workforce they they don't. There's a, a study I was reading about. I had someone who was pitching me an idea. I can say it because there's no NDA or any of that, and no one's gonna steal it. Um, where you bring uh, a doctor's office to a big business. Right. And they get their physical done. The, like you, you set it like a pop up yeah. doctor's office, mm-hmm. um, because in the stat that was the impetus for it was can't get off of work, pe- or people just don't want to take two hours to do it. Yeah, they people are so trapped. We have Stockholm syndrome so bad that we don't want to take two hours or use two valuable hours that they could use for personal time. Yeah, um, if you're that kind of company where mm-hmm. you do every hour has to be tracked for personal time <laughs> right. off. Um, I used to be in that. A mutual fund company is horrible, but I get it. It's hard to man- ran- you know, wrangle everybody. But that's the same thing with y'all. There may be one where you want to try to go like, hey, we'll do Tuesday nights and we'll go late or something like that. Yeah, uh, the, f- the flip, or Saturday not morning. flip side, but uh, an alternative, you know, is a secondary grasshopper phone line emergency line yeah. that rings right to her or I and you know if we're close by she, you know at least to start out like take it all baby like we'll show up like whatever you know oh yeah yeah concierge on on the uh, on call I'm but I'm talking about like the working stiffs the the, the nine that now it's like eight to sixers because mm-hmm. you don't really get out you get out of work you got to drive so yeah if, um if you had like a every Third Saturday, you, you go for a half day. Yeah, yeah. In the morning. And then, you know, you go... You or know, a Monday where you work noon to eight sort of thing. Yeah. Or like a certain day during the week where you were open late, late. Or know. she could cut Mondays all, all together, probably. And make a Saturday. Yeah. And or, or go, you know, work the hours out however it's going to work. Yeah. But go later in one day a week and then every, every two weeks a Saturday half day morning um because now here's here's a big thing now you're really getting into the empathy of the patient right and you're gonna have a lot of working people that just don't go Mm -hmm. and they'd like to and they want to get it done or you go you guys are early so you guys wake up you wake up at four so maybe you do something where it's a super early day that'd be weird yeah, but I mean, like, oh yeah, because that's your own time. <laughs> you know, stuff, okay, I'm not get crazy. You know, but time. you know what I'm saying? Like, try to have some options to work around that that working stiff. Person yeah, yeah. Because that's the that's also probably the person that's more likely to get to want to get dental 
service time. Yeah, or share with their coworkers who are in the same boat as them and can't get out of there. Right. So the, that other part of like, why do does every doctor's office dentist uh, dentistry? Why do you sit there and wait? Like I know. It, so that's going to be the tough one for you because you're inheriting a staff, and you're you what. I'll tell you as someone who's come in and uh, lately we go in and go, this is how it should be done. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good way to do it. No. Unless you have total, like, unless you're just a fucking John Taffer type, but you can just walk in and go, even then you see pushback. Yeah, no, it's it's just, it's not going to work. It's not going to be good for you. It's not going to help to try and steamroll everybody the, the hardest Plus they've been doing it in a certain way and it's it has its own efficiency in that that they all know how to do what they're doing right sort of thing so uh you guys got probably a lot of paper files i'd call my friend rachel at dex uh imaging and get her to uh e like scan everything just yep, do that's that that's on the, that's on the uh i'll give you her information agenda. she's good people um and then uh what's it called so you get that out of the way, then you figure out your data management system for that. I'm sure you have some dental something. Yeah, that's a whole other ball game. It's a dental software, but I mean, they get ripped they, off, man. Dentists get ripped off, and I didn't even realize it. Lawyers get ripped off. I didn't know that until we got into that game. Like, they don't know because they they have to be the best dentist or lawyer usually. Right. And yeah. They're, they they're trying time. to run the business, but they're not business people. Right. Yeah. Typically, the yeah. lawyers more is especially astounding because. I feel like a lawyer's more set up to be better businessmen. You'd think so. Well, they are. I think the personality they are, but you get in the mindset of like, I, I'm the best lawyer. Like, right. Uh, Dennis, it's so far, I feel like that's so far away from anything business wise mm-hmm. because of insurance stuff, because of like, I don't know, just the way that industry's set up. And then the fucking, look, if you're a dentist listening to this, <laughs> Don't get hosed by those marketing companies. They will gouge you. Yeah, There's a dude. lot of lead in, fluffing, a uh, lot, a lot of getting that blood flowing down there. Don't even need four dude, hymns. The the amount of money. The, the span of like the the cost. So we you know we have to hire an attorney, have to hire a CPA for this transition. We had quotes from lawyers ranging from um, twenty five hundred to twelve thousand five hundred dollars yeah. to review contracts yeah just and all they're doing is pulling out their fucking form letter because they've done it a thousand times and uh yeah yeah and then Most reviewing what the other person's bringing to the table and you know doing some work but five digits yeah are you kidding me yeah like get like so wha- so like uh Friend of the program, Fantetti, Steve Fantetti, FantettiLegal.com, your business refined. Yeah, I'll throw a plug in. Uh, him and I talk about it all the time, and, um, you know, we try to update our contracts. It's expensive up front, but then once a quarter, you should you should get your lawyer to, to update that stuff because stuff changes. Keep it Evernote. I keep Evernote of, like, hey, make sure to ask Steve about this, maybe adding this into... Mm-hmm. Our uh, contracts. At one point, I didn't really have a, a way of going. This is our service. This is uh, blah blah blah. This is you. You guys are going to need it like a cookie privacy one too for the website. Yeah, because every website has to have one now. Yeah, uh, I think Google is not ranking you higher if you don't have that, and yeah. you are using cookie tagging um, or remarketing tag conversion pixel. Right. Uh, but what you. It, it's mindset too. So the way I think about it is by being stricter and better on that side and playing armchair attorney a little bit more than I want to, it's not open me up to liability or being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So think about it that way. Peace of mind is huge. Right. For me at least. Well, well you always have to keep going with the mindset that, you know, some like you'll have like a, that panic attack every three months or so, Mm -hmm. or that wake up in the middle of the night. It's fun being a small business owner. And, uh, and you'll go, Oh shit, I got to tighten up. Like, what am I doing? Someone could expose this loophole again, get get on the other side, contrarian logic. Look at what they're trying to look at. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they get that poker thing poked a little too hard. And where you at? Right. Like, when if you have someone that's just shyster like that? Yeah, that happens. Most they tell them in dental school, you're gonna get sued. 
Like, really? They just straight up tell him, like, everybody gets sued. You know? It's great. I mean, shit happens. So you better have Nikki that. had a friend. Uh, a burr flew off into their lungs and, uh, I mean, just had a, a, a floating piece of metal in their lungs. You know, there's nobody, nobody did anything wrong, but it yeah. happens. Like, right. shit happens where right. it's like, they almost have to sue. And it's like, you can't, like, you have this, uh, this insurance for that reason because, you know, yeah. when it happens, the... Uh, the person needs to be compensated in some way. They're going to have medical bills and all that. And then there was nothing the dentist did wrong. It just happened. So there's got to be uh, measures for that. So the, um, because I, I didn't realize we're at an hour. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oops. Uh, so short, I'll try to give a real quick short thing to kind of go with it. Um, have a soft launch, mm-hmm. which you're in, you're going to be in, Sooner than I thought. Soon, yeah. Probably 20 days. Yeah, I mean, sooner than that. So soft launch it, and then do you only get one grand opening. Uh, I tell people this a lot of times. I, mm-hmm. I learned this through a smarter boss, a smarter man than I, who's my former boss uh, in a franchise system. You only get one shot at that grand opening. So let's, let's do it correctly. Uh, let's call it 90 days out from when you do your soft launch. Yeah. So spend that 90-day period from here to now between here and the grand opening retaining uh-huh. and then that grand opening will be seen as like, all right, we're still doing retention plan, but now we're going to try to acquire new. Yes. And, um, we have some renovations we got to do and all that stuff. So before we do any sort of grand opening, are you doing a mint show? coloring? Yeah, probably. Do you need a paint It'll company? Light. Are you going to do it? Uh, we don't know yet. We're hoping for a little, a barter, Situation. So if any, we got any painters out there that need some dental work done, uh, hit me up. You, you call uh, Pav, my guy. Pav. Uh, Brian Pav. Pav uh, go to pavtampa.com. He's my, uh, this is very local, but um, <laughs> if you made it this far, you're, you're willing to listen to <laughs> it. Look, he'll fly out to wherever you are. That's how good he is. Uh, you might want to hire him to, if you have a, your mountain home, he's done that. Because he's so good, they go, hey, we have this other home in Tennessee. We'll fly you out just to do all the work, and you guys can stay there. His family can stay there kind of shit. We're talking about painting walls? He'll do it. He'll probably barter with you. Yeah, good. If you're, he, That'd be great. If you say you're a friend of over here, and you, this is the, he made this table. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, good dude, um, son of a carpenter. Um, We're going to need it. We he got hates it. painting, but he'll he'll do it. We got lots of work to be done. And so. then, you know, that whole client experience, we talked about a step and repeat, maybe on the way out, um, that the red carpet kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So you have one wall that you get the logo and you do it in like that checker formation pattern. Right. Re- be sure to have your social media release forms handy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, your lawyer should get something up that, hey, we'll contact you um about this, this, and this. You're signing this to agree to that. Blah blah blah. Uh, I would say, yeah, get the social media handy. Get a get one of those mic. Um, if you're a podcaster, you've probably looked up the mic arms that are like. I used to have to make them from an IKEA lamp, but yeah. now now you can get them on Amazon for twelve dollars. Yeah, we got a bunch of robot. It looks like Johnny Five. <laughs> so, so take one of those mic uh mic holder elbows and then take it and then uh clamp a ipad mini on there old, get an old shitty one yep put a case on it so no one knows uh-huh. it, it's only used for taking pictures yeah nothing else yeah that's and you, good we should be doing it here <laughs> that's how i know this idea yeah um but a step and repeat style thing like put a little little carpet down maybe uh, a little red carpet that is a little runner mm-hmm. something something fun or get a yeah. mint, mint colored one if you can kind of thing yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what are the other ideas I had? I, I almost looked up the text I sent her when she was at her former place or soon to be former uh, practice. I was like, here's seven ideas I thought of while I was <laughs> sitting in the chair and couldn't talk to you back. Yeah. The thing overhead, that sounds small, huge, because you, you have nothing to look at. Right. Yeah. So it would need to be something beyond just a picture maybe uh maybe mount tvs on the ceiling I yeah don't know. i thought about that that might not be a bad i mean do you know what i actually thought would be a fucking really cool the the vr goggles that you can do like you could take 
um, friend of the program, John Paul Labity has a drone now, right? Mm-hmm. And he got the VR goggles that let you see from the perspective of the drone's camera. Weird. You can take those and plug an HDMI cord directly into them and watch TV, play video games, hmm. all that shit. Hmm. Yeah, because because you can't really watch because watching I've. I've been on something where they're like, you can watch TV. And it's like, yeah, when their head's not in the way. Right. Yeah. Kind of. You right. know, it's like if it's in the corner of its place. I mean, it rarely works. But that the only thing that I can see the drawback to that is the bulkiness of it. But I'm sure there's something around the that. The tech there's will get like, better, yeah, too. Maybe I mean, you just put, put table that. But I like where your head's at. I'm, I'm looking into like that. Like a RoboCop eyes where it yeah. just slides on yeah. like blue blockers. Right. Um, yeah, that whole, what's, all right, what sucks about going to the dentist? That's something you can, and if you're listening to this, not in the dental field, what sucks about hiring an attorney? What sucks about getting insurance, you know, from a broker? You yeah, know, any of this stuff. That how do you whole, prove? That whole client experience, like, wh- how do you make that better? Punctuality is going to be huge. Do you have a booking app or calendar, like a scheduling system? That's a uh, point of contention, but. What do you want to do? Well, sure I, your I, wife wants to do a dental one that's like dental only. Software. Well, no, no. The 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 thing, and I understand what she's saying, is like uh, when it comes to dental appointments, you can really only, if you want to do an online appointment deal, you can really only do like your first initial visit because most procedures have a variable time that it takes to get done. So that's when the wait times come in. So you can't really go on and say, all right, this person, there's a four hour procedure scheduled here, whatever you can get that next appointment, you know, and then they, they put in that appointment for one thing. If they're not, if it's on a first visit, that patient doesn't know how, like what they're getting done necessarily or how long it takes or all that stuff, which could be worked around sort of thing, but it still doesn't get rid of the, what if the procedure before that takes longer problem? Dude, this we, we're figuring this out with our own labor. You, you guys can figure this out, right? Oh, so yeah, like, for sure. It's so, just So you may not be able to do it right away, right? Like now you got to track time. Actual or, or what you perceive as schedule, like scheduled mm-hmm. versus the actual, right? Yeah. So that needs to be a hypothesis test like starting today and go, okay. We can get, because you're going to have to go, you're a labor business. So you have to go, and people need to think about this. Any service industry uh, or service professional needs to think about this. What is your uh, billable hour? What is your uh, cost hour, right? So you, how many hours can you work a week to? What's your mm-hmm. max? What's What's good for you mentally, like on that? Right, yeah. 40 legit labor hours that's not including the administrative stuff like call it she's in there she's in the in the biz right uh-huh. it's a big math problem but it, it's if you think about it like you're sometimes i do this 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 helps me kind of get into it i'm going to figure out something that a lot of people never do uh at this labor math problem for small business and i'm going to feel really smart when i come out the other end because that that might be the key to being super successful in scale. Right. You, Finding it, the real cost. The idea isn't just to have one of these places, right? The idea is to, you know, over time, bring someone up. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why y'all went brand name with the localized name mm-hmm. um, instead of leading with her name. Right. I think her name listed on everything online it right. needs to be for sales dental, Dr. Uh, is Morganti? She, yeah, she goes Nikki Morganti. I, I, f- I always forget she doesn't use y- your last name. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, you guys are PC. No big deal. I'm not gonna make fun of that. I don't. I don't. <laughs> you know, like, I don't really give a shit. Give a shit. Um, I mean, so just letters. Yeah, I agree. Just legal paperwork. I agree. I told my wife to use her her last name for stand up. Yeah, I think it's unique, but it's hard to spell, so I right. don't know. Mm. Yeah, um, kind of pronounced. Terizios are tough. Yeah, people are like Terozo. Terizo, the sauce. <laughs> yeah, um, so I think we we went over some stuff. I, I think know we'll, we'll have <laughs> to. We'll probably let's do a part two of this when the CPA comes in. Yeah, that's a good point. And then we'll do that. um, I'll have more ideas too. That because we're doing this early as fuck on a Saturday for mm-hmm. a podcast. Yeah, not early in general. You know, we started at eight, but 
you know, early to get your thoughts collected. We're not radio fucking guys. Yeah. Morning zoo. Yeah, it's okay though. All right, I think man. We got a lot done. Uh, I, we got some stuff. That, look, bond dot com alone. Yeah, but dot co. Dot co. Excuse me. <sighs> Woo. That was quick. Because you might have gone to like a James Bond, uh, like love site or something. Yes. Like that. But yeah. Um, and for the listeners that made it this far, why don't you come a little further? Like Shawshank Redemption, help us. Yeah. SweatEquityPod.com. Just tell a friend. If you made it this far in the podcast, you're listening to this. You, you, you might, have a duty, okay? Yeah. Just uh, tell a friend. Tell that loved one. Um, just like I said, just get their phones. Subscribe. Don't you don't even have to tell them. Learn their passcode. Yeah. Get into iTunes. Just download that shit. Just yeah. Don't they get don't even the, notice. Don't ever, ever get in a, a battle, rap battle. With Pusha T. Just don't ever do that. Why would you do that, Drake? I This is news to me. He's talking about look this, at this stuff. I don't did you see that? The <laughs> if you look at the cover that, photo of the of the hate song. That is... Uh, put, put, put Drake in blackface. Uh, powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. But Whoa. look, if you, if you like this podcast, just hit that share button. It's right there. It's that little square with the arrow going out. Hit that. Send it to your friends. Go, hey... I love this show. I know. We, send it to your friend that already listens to podcasts. That seems to be the huge barrier. Yeah. Unless it's a chick that listens to stereo. I listen to murder. Uh, yeah. It's like, what's a podcast? Never mind. Okay. If yeah. you don't know by now, you don't care. So I, I, I had this conversation. Oh, you you li- you listen to podcasts. Uh, what do you like? It's like, oh, just only serial killer stuff. And I was like, <laughs> cool. Well, I've been doing my own for a while. Uh you know, and it kind of relates to the meeting we literally just had. Do you want? I'll, I'll just send it to you anyway. Why don't you hook up that five star? It's like, yeah, yeah I probably won't listen to it. <laughs> she told me straight up. Maybe we should just put that we talk about serial killers and shit on the in the tagline. I know. Just never do it. I know, man. Um, well, I think that's it. You got anything else? I'm good. SweatEquityPod.com, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, LinkedIn, Facebook. All that shit. Twitter. Goodbye. Bye.